Hi, this is Mrs. Yowd, and today I'm going to teach you Chapter 10, Lesson 1. This is all about the basics of exponents. If you haven't already, make sure that you watch the other videos that I assign about the basics of exponents first before continuing with this video. You should be taking notes in your spiral notebook while watching this video so that you can use your notes while you do your assignments. First, some vocabulary. This expression, 1 half raised to the power of 5, is called a power because it's a product of repeated factors. The base of the power is the part that gets multiplied several times. And the exponent is the part that tells us how many times to multiply that base. So in this case, our base is 1 half and our exponent is 5. That means that we need to take the 1 half and multiply it 5 times. Then we can simplify this. 2 times 2 is 4, and here's another 4. So now I have 4 times 4, which is 16, and 16 times 2 is 32. So this would be the same as 1 over 32. For example 1, we need to write each product using exponents. So on letter A, I can see that there are five fours. So if I'm going to rewrite four times four times four times four times four as a product using exponents, I'm going to write it four to the power of five, and that's my answer. On letter B, I have two fives, so that piece is five squared. And then over here, I have three negative x's, so that would be negative x to the power of 3. So my final answer is 5 squared negative x to the power of 3. I would like you to try letters C and D on your own and then turn the video back on to see if you got it right. Okay, I got for letter C, negative 1 over 8 all to the power of 3 and for letter D I got 9 squared y to the power of 6. Something I want to point out to you is that it's really, really important that you put parentheses around your numbers if you have a negative. So you'll see that I did that for letter C, and I also did it down here for letter B. Let me explain to you why that is. So here I have an extra example, negative 3 without the parentheses squared and negative 3 with the parentheses squared. Are they equal to each other? Well, the first one is negative 1 times 3 times 3. And the second one is negative 3 times negative 3. You'll notice that in the first one, this negative is all by itself. It is not squared. But here on the right side, I have the whole quantity of negative 3 squared. So that means that the answer to the left side is negative 9, but the answer to the right side is positive 9, so these two are definitely not equal. So as you can see, if you do have negative as part of your exponent, you have to make sure to put the parentheses around it, like we did for letter B up here with the negative x, and we did up here for letter C with the negative 1 over 8. In example two, we need to evaluate each expression. So for letter A, we're taking negative two and we're multiplying it four times. So negative two times negative two here is four, and these are also four, and then we just need to multiply the four times four together to get 16. So the answer is positive 16. On letter B, we have negative and then 2 to the power of 4. So remember that means negative 1 and then we have 4 twos. So in this case we have 2 times 2 is 4 and these 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. But there's also this negative 1 out here so it's actually going to be negative 16. Remember on the previous slide I showed you that that parentheses really does make a difference with the answers. Num letters A and B look very similar, but there are parentheses on letter A, which means it's a positive 16, and there's no parentheses on letter B, so the answer turned out to be negative 16. 
Letter C, we have 10, and we multiply it three times. So 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 multiplied by this 10 is 1,000. So the answer is 1,000. For letter D, I multiply negative 7 four times. 7 times 7 is 49, so negative 7 times negative 7 is also positive 49. And these two also multiply to 49. It might help to get a calculator. If you don't have one with you, please pause the video and go get your calculator now. 49 multiplied by 49 is 2,401. For letter E, we're going to have this negative stays out front. And then I have 1 sixth multiplied five times. You'll notice that the negative, once again, is outside of the parentheses. So that means that this negative is not to the power of five. It stays out front and becomes part of the answer. So now we're going to multiply these together. We have six times six is 36, and that's also 36. So now we have 36 multiplied by 36, and then one more 6 here. Again, it would help to have a calculator for this. That is 7,776. So our answer is negative 1 over 7,776. In example 3, we're going to evaluate the expression again, but this time we need to make sure that we're paying attention to the order of operations. Remember, the order of operations is groupings, exponents, multiplication and division from left to right, and addition and subtraction also from left to right. So let's take a look at letter A. The first thing I need to do for letter A is my exponent because I don't have any groupings in this problem because my exponent comes next. So let's simplify negative 5 squared. Negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5, so that would be positive 25. I still have 3 plus 6 multiplied. Now, thinking about order of operations, multiplication and division come next. So 6 times 25 is 150, so I have 3 plus 150. Now I can do my addition and 3 plus 150 is 153. So my answer is 153. On letter B, I need to follow the order of operations again. This time I will be using groupings, and I have two different groupings. I have a grouping here, which are the parentheses, and then I have a great big grouping here, which is the whole problem, which is the absolute value. So first I'm going to work inside the, the one on the inside, so we need to do the parentheses first. Within that grouping, I still need to follow the rest of the order of operations. So exponents come first within those parentheses. So I have 1 to the power of 10, which is 1, plus 9, minus, and then I have 2 to the power of 3. So that's 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, and so 4 times 2 is 8. So inside this grouping, I have 1 plus 9 minus 8. I still have the 1 third out here, and I still have my absolute value out there. Okay, I'm still working inside this grouping. I'm not finished yet. So I still need to do what's left here. So I'm going to do my addition and then my subtraction. Remember, we work from left to right. So we have the absolute value of negative 1 third, and then 1 plus 9 is 10, and I still have minus 8. So now let's finish this. We have negative 1 third. And now we can finally finish this. 10 minus 8 is 2. Okay, so now I can do this multiplication here. So this is 2 over 1. So we have the absolute value of negative 2 over 3. And the absolute value of negative 2 over 3 is positive 2 over 3. So 2 thirds is my answer. On letter C, I still need to follow my order of operations, so I have groupings come first. I do have a grouping here of the absolute value. Within that grouping, I need to do exponents first because that comes next. 
so I need to do negative 3 to the third power. Remember that we don't have parentheses here, so this is the same as negative 1 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So inside my absolute value, I have negative 27 divided by 27. 27 divided by 27 is 1. So this turns into absolute value of negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So my answer is positive 1. I would like you to do letter D on your own and then turn the video back on to see if you got it right. Okay, I got negative 7. Did you get negative 7? If you didn't, see if you can find your mistake. For example 4, we have a real life application. A person is secured inside the small hollow sphere that is surrounded by a larger sphere. So the person would be inside here and there is a larger sphere that is surrounding them. The space between the spheres is inflated with air. So all of this space here is inflated with air. What is the volume of that inflated space? In order to answer this, we need to know that the volume of a sphere equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, where r is the radius of the sphere. So in this problem, we need to take the volume of the large sphere and subtract the volume of the small sphere. So let's see if we can find the radius. The radius of the large sphere would be half of this length because that length, three meters, is the distance across the whole entire sphere. And so we need to find out what half that is. So the radius of the large sphere is 1.5 meters. Okay, let's plug that in. 4 thirds pi and my radius is 1.5, so 1.5 to the power of 3. Let's take a look at the small sphere. The small sphere has a length of 2 all the way across, and so we need to find half of that. And so the small sphere has a radius of 1 meter. So let's plug that in. 4 thirds pi 1 to the power of 3. Okay, so now we need to just to simplify this, and I need to use my order of operations. I don't have any groupings, but I do have exponents. So since I have a fraction here, I am going to change my 1.5 into a fraction as well, so that it would be easier for me to simplify. So 1.5 is the same as 3 over 2. So this is going to be 3 over 2 to the power of 3, and then I have my pi and I have 4 thirds. Okay, so 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 is the same as 27 over 8. And the rest of it stays the same. I have a pi and I have a 4 thirds. The second part of the equation is 4 thirds times pi and 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, so we don't need to write multiplied by 1. You can if you want to, but we really don't need it. So now I'm going to take this and continue it up here because I'm starting to run out of room. So on the left side I have 4, and I'm just going to keep my pi's on the numerator, times 27, all over 3 times 8 on the bottom. And on the right part of the equation I have 4 pi over 3. Okay, let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. We have 4 and 8. That can simplify to 1 and 2. And the 27 over 3 can also simplify to a 1 on the denominator, and 27 divided by 3 is 9 on the numerator. So, to continue simplifying this, I have 9 multiplied by pi all over 2 minus 4 multiplied by pi all over 3. We do need to get our denominators the same in order to combine like terms. So I'm going to multiply by 3's here and by 2's here. So then I have 27 pi minus 8 pi all over 6. 
and 27 minus 8 is 19. So I have 19 pi all over 6. And that's a fine answer, but if you want to multiply it through on your calculator, 19 multiplied by pi, or 3.14, all divided by 6, you get approximately 10. And so that gives us an answer of 10 meters cubed. Because it's volume, we want to make sure to put the cube on the meters. And that is the end of today's lesson, which is chapter 10, lesson one, basics of exponents.